Hey everyone, I've got a special guest that's dropped in today. I don't know if you remember this face, but this is Nick Pappas. I did a video on him on personal stories a couple of years ago. Would that be right, yeah, Nick? Yeah, okay, two so and two and a half years ago. Just to give you a quick sort of bio on Nick, at the time when I first met him, he was opening up Century 21 in Maroubra, which is in the south, south or eastern suburbs of Sydney, right? Yeah, south yeah, east, south, yeah. yeah, beautiful. And you'd come from what, Century 21 at Fairfield, Fairfield. you were number one agent yeah, from yeah, there. Yeah. And you like left all that market share. Yeah to start from zero <laughs> in yeah. a whole new marketplace. Yeah. Have you got rocks in there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. I sometimes think like, that. Like, like start from zero and your growth that I've seen has been phenomenal in the last, yeah, what, two years, three years now? How long have you been doing it now? Yeah, two, two and a half Two years and a half now. years yeah. now, Nick, yeah. right? So, mate, congratulations, buddy. Yeah, well done. You. I just thank want to you. say, like, from the bottom of my heart to yours, man, that's just rocking it. Yeah, okay? it is. It's good. Thank you very much. Man, if, if you can do what he's doing, <laughs> learn something I mean, from you. Know, I've got good people around me as well. Like, you've been around me yeah. for Family and friends. Oh, I'm, I'm and a good lucky. team at Century. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Well. I'm very lucky. Yeah. So I'm grateful. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So tell me, Nick, um, let's talk today a little bit about buyers and yep. buyer management because being a coach, I'm talking with a lot of agents, and one yep. thing I do say is like have a buyer management plan. Mm. And I know speaking with you in our sessions, I think you've got it like a world class the way you do your yeah. buyers, you know. Um, I'd like for you to share with the guys yep. and the viewers today a little bit about what are some of the things that you do. So for example, you say you have buy meetings. Yeah. Like for some people out there, an agent would go, a buy meeting, what's, what's a buy yeah. meeting, you know? I used to say that too. Um, like someone brought that up to me and said, look, maybe you need to have some more buy meetings. Yeah. And, um, we sell a lot through auction. Yep. So our meetings are more about, you know, some people have gone to an open house that the property is going to auction, Yep. but they don't actually understand what they need to do at the auction if they yeah. want to bid. So they act like they know because everybody wants to act like they know everything. Yes. and then. When they get to the auction, what we, we, we were noticing that people were sort of clamming up, and we thought, hang on a sec, you know, we've done all this work with you. Yeah, but you, we've got you to the auction. Yeah, well, like, what's, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so they've got the uh, choke on. Yeah, and then they'd say to you, like, after the auction, when you'd walk back up, and say, oh, why didn't you buy the product? Why didn't you even make a bid? You know, yeah. you were saying, so, Nick, you know, we sort of got a little bit worried. We didn't know, and they, they just didn't feel comfortable with the process because they didn't know enough about it. Right. So we were sort of talking in one of our sales meetings saying, look, you know, what are we doing wrong? And yeah. I think the biggest thing that we were doing wrong was not educating the buyers enough mm. as to what they had to do to actually buy the property. And right. I mean, even making a pre-auction offer, people would say, well, I want to make an offer. And we'd say, yeah, right, make an offer. That's how we always yeah. would, you use our dialogue. And then yeah. an offer would come in and then all of a sudden you'd be going to the owner. And it was all verbal. So what we thought was, you know what, if we're going to start taking pre-auction offers, we're going to really let people know what a pre-auction offer should look like. Okay. So wow. it's more about saying, look, you know, this is where the guide of the property is. This is what's on the market. This is what's yeah. on the sold. Yeah. So if you were an owner, how would you feel about a pre-auction offer? And where yeah. would you feel that your property would come in? So we try and make the buyer feel like, look, if you were selling your property yes. with these conditions around it, yep. how, where would you want to position your sale price? Yeah. Right. And then they sort of realize, okay, so that's where we would need to be for a pre-auction offer. Yep. So, you know, we, we always try and give people a guide um, that's not closed, but we, we try and say, like, let's say we're selling a home that you know we, we think is worth around 1.5. We always try and say, people, look, it could be anywhere from 1450, you know, yep. up to 1.6, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's somewhere in that range. But yep. if you were going to try and make an offer prior to auction, I can tell you now the owner's going to want to hit 1.6. Yes. But if you're going to come to auction, then it's about the competition that's at the auction, mm. and are you willing to risk going to auction for the competition? Yep. Yep. And that's when buyers start thinking, yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. then they'll either say to you, "Well, I want to make a pre-auction offer." So we'll run through the process of how they should do that. Yes and how it should look to, yep. to make it happen. Right. Um, and then we'll feel for them. And if, they, if they're still at 1.45 or 1.5, we'll say, well, look, yeah, we can definitely submit the offer, yes. but it won't be probably not accepted yes. um, due to the fact that, not that the owners aren't motivated, but yeah. that price isn't going to really, like, they know if they go to auction, there's probably going to be competition at that level. Correct. You know? Yeah. So then we sort of fill the buyer out and make them understand about the auction process. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah. explain to them what competition looks like. Yep. Uh, explain to them that if they want to be competitive, how they should probably be bidding on the property. Yeah, right. Um, and then you sort of fill out how the buyers are feeling about that. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, you know, a lot of agents talk about I had eight registered bidders or 10 registered yep. bidders, you know. What we're noticing, especially in, in our marketplace at the moment, it's not about how many registered bidders you have, it's about how many serious bidders you have. have yeah. You know? So we can have Big a lot of- Big differentiation, yeah. Yeah, huge, right? So we can have a lot of registered bidders at auctions, yep. and uh, that looks great. You know, and we're still getting big crowds at auctions, but yeah. we'd rather have the three most serious buyers bidding on the property. Correct. That know where they need to be, that are positioned to buy the property. Correct. And we're noticing our auctions selling 
a lot quicker. Yeah. At auction, yes. like, like when they're at the auction, like the, the, the actual Because you've process. explained the process. Yeah, so you've they know what price they need to be at. And you've educated them, yeah. knowing what the market is, yeah. what's on the market, yeah. what's in competition, yeah. what's recently sold. And they feel really comfortable about That's that. That's great. You know, and what we're doing to help buyers a lot is um, around our apartment sales, we're, we're actually buying strata plans and, like, sorry, buying the strata report. Yep. So we're actually giving them the strata report. Making saying, it look, easier. Yeah. Make it easy for the buyer. This is for you. Look, don't, I know you've gone to three or four other properties yeah, yeah. and you don't want to buy you know, and, and, and already spent a thousand dollars on different yeah, strata yeah, reports. Yeah. So we're actually paying for it up front with your owners now, on you. and we're giving that to them. Yeah, what a point um, of difference! Awesome. Yeah, we're providing that. We're providing them the last three months of comparable properties that have sold in that suburb. Yep. So we're just, like just a free suburb. So report. it's all like information, information, just information, information for them to be able to make a good decision. Yeah. And then what we try and do is, you know, it's hard to do it every week because. You don't want to be trying to sell them someone else's listing. No, but of course. What, what we try and do is show them what's come on in competition to the property they want to buy. Yeah, yeah. And just ask them if they've gone to see it. Yep. And if like how they felt with it. That's more with our contract holders though. Yes. Not with like every single buyer. Because some people walk through and they just don't like the property yeah, or it's yeah. not for them. But with our contract holders, I, I I really like talking to them about, you know, what else have you looked at? Yep. And how did you feel about that compared to this? Because yeah. that's feedback to my owner as well. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's important to have those conversations with a buyer. Absolutely. Because that's feedback to your owner saying, well, this is now what we're in competition with. And yeah. This is what's going on there. So that's been working really well for us. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So So I'm tell me this. Um, I mean, it's some great highlights and points that you've brought out, you mm. know. Uh, in terms of your buyer meetings, where do you hold them? Do you meet in a cafe? Do you bring bite them to your office? Do you, where would you generally have it, your buyer meetings? It depends, meeting? like I, I like to not meet anyone in the office. Not yep. because I love my office, but <laughs> yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't like to meet. Because I think it just feels like as if they're coming for me to, I don't know, yeah, like people just up. think, yeah, I'm gonna close Set these guys. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Like, you know, people think about real estate agents. So yeah. for me, it's more about, you know, let's just go grab a coffee. And it's not about an hour appointment. It, it could go for five minutes, it yep. could go for, Half an minutes, hour. could go for half an hour. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't set it up. I yeah. just say, look, let's just go for a quick coffee. Yeah. And you just run with the flow. It's a conversation. Yeah. Because the, the reality is the buyer's under pressure. But you're coming from that place of hell <clears throat> yeah. and not sell, right? No, yeah. no. Because you know why? Like, the reality is they're going to know if they want to buy it. Yeah. And then it's about them asking themselves the question of how much yeah. they want to buy it. So all I want to do is make sure that they understand how much they want to buy it. Understand. And then if they say to me, look Nick, we really want it. Well, it's mm. about just guiding them through the process. Yeah. The rest is going to happen. Right? Yeah, yeah. But some people don't actually know the process. Yeah, and yeah. even with, you know, for sale properties, like I've had a lot of agents that are working with us and saying, oh, you know, private treaty, what have we got to do? Because everything was just going to auction before yeah. and selling. So now we've had a few more private treaties. So if it didn't sell at auction, for example, yeah. we're negotiating afterwards. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you know, like cooling off periods, you know, yeah. what do we do with that? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so these are the new things that we're learning and yeah. buyers are even saying, well, what, you know, what do you mean by cooling off yeah, period? Yeah, you know? yeah, do I yeah. get my money back? So educating them on that it, level. It's just it educating them yeah. about what they need to do if they want to buy the property Understand. and how the process should look like. Yeah. Because um, some people think buying a home is also stressful, and we say, look, it's not really, you know, mm -hmm. like it, mm -hmm. and it really isn't, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's all, like the stressful part is when you're sort of that close and you're sort of trying to bridge the gap, but yeah. that's not even stressful because you got to jump on it, like, like look at it from the other side, and we yeah. always say that to the vendor and to our buyer. So look, you know, just look at it from their side before you get upset yeah. or get angry because of the buyer. The buyer doesn't actually hate you yeah. or dislike you or, or your property. Otherwise, they wouldn't be negotiating yeah. with you, you know. Yeah, yeah, and vice yeah. versa, like buyers say, oh, the owners, you know, no, the owners not. They actually don't actually really want you to buy the property. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But this is what why they can't come to that level. Yeah. And if they were, they could, they would, you know. Yeah. But this is why. Um, and I think it's just really getting people to understand that. Yep. And I think once you can get your buyer and owner without getting them together to, 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 to talk to each other yeah, yeah, yeah. through me, yeah, yeah. and we're all on the same, same page, page, it just makes life really totally. easy. Totally. Tell me something. Yep. Um, one thing about you know when you build rapport, it equals mm. trust, right? Would you agree with that? Yeah, like you build rapport, there's yeah. gonna be a level of trust. Yeah. Do you find that you do that really well? So even if it goes to auction, mm. and let's just say the bidding stalls below the reserve price, yeah. and you have the opportunity to go and talk to the buyer. I've seen where agents go up to buyers and buyers like throwing their arms up at them. Yeah. And that just tells me they've never had rapport with that buyer yeah. from the beginning, right? Um, do you feel that you have the confidence that you've built enough with these buyers yeah. based on what you're talking about today that you can go up to them and you know if you needed to maybe extract another 30 40 or fifty thousand mm. dollars to close that gap at the auction between the vendor and the buyer that they have a level of trust with you that they sort of you yeah. sort of said look you know whatever dialogue you may use 
to close that gap? Do you feel that you've got that rapport? I'd like to say I do because just recently I've had a couple of auctions and I've only had one or two buyers, but yep. I actually tell the buyers, there's only, like, you're going to be the only buyer at the auction on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just thought I'd let you know. So just tell the truth, right? Yeah. Just be upfront. Just tell them and say, look, but, but explain why. Yeah. And I always say, look, you know, we've had a few drop off or they've bought something, yeah. whatever the reason may be, right? Yeah, good. But I'll say, look, you, you're going to be the only buyer. Look, be careful. Yeah. Don't think you're going to get it for nothing because yes. the owner also knows that you're going to be the only buyer. And the yeah. owner's now preparing to say, well, what could my plan B be? Yep. So they're already thinking plan B. Yes. And if you're going to be thinking you're going to buy it for nothing, yeah. then you're going to have to start preparing for plan B as well. Exactly. And I always say to buyers, which you've probably seen in your real estate yeah. career and all the people you talk to as far as agents are concerned, so, like sometimes buyers think, oh, we won't bid now. And if it passes in, yeah. we'll buy it. Yeah, yeah, But then yeah. you've also got two or three others thinking the same way. Correct. And you just try and explain that to people. Yeah, and if yeah. you look at statistics, most properties that go to auction that don't sell usually sell within the next week. Correct, within so seven days, absolutely. Then they're gonna create High more, percentage of them, yeah. high percentage. And if I was a buyer, and yep. I always say to my buyers, I'd rather be competing with yep. the people that are around me there and then that I yep. can see, yep. than competing with someone I don't know. That would make me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. I'd rather be ne negotiating at an auction yep. where I can see who my competition is. Yeah. I just think telling people as it is, yep. and just saying, look, you're gonna be the only buyer, this is where you're probably gonna to need to be positioned at. Yep. And it's, then it comes back to where you've been quoting throughout your campaign. Yeah. So a lot of buyers and agents, as we know, like to think, oh, if we underquote, we'll just get more people. Yeah. And I think you definitely create more people, but at the wrong level. Yeah. So the wrong interest, the wrong level, mm. it doesn't matter. Yeah. The, like, the numbers matter, but y you know what I mean? Can I ask you do, you, do you feel dialogue's important today, a level of skill in the marketplace? With buyers that could be saying, for example, and you know, Buyers at the moment, you might have a guide, let's call it 750 to yeah. maybe 825. And they're coming in at maybe giving you an offer of 725, which is below the guide. Yeah. Do you feel there's a level of skill that's needed today in the marketplace for the agent yeah. to level up their skills? Look, 100%, I, I, I think a lot of agents, um, like dialogue, I, I like that word yeah. because you've got to have good dialogue, yeah. but you don't want to sound like every other no. real estate agent. No, no, right? no. So it's funny, you know, there's a lot of real estate trainers and coaches that say we've got to have this dialogue. Dialogue, correct. And we all use the same dialogue, so then you walk into that. <laughs> Do you know what I call it? Yeah. And, and through my training, I call it language patterns. Yeah, I think because it is. It's more there, of a language there, pattern. Because yeah. certain language patterns yeah. that you use, you have more an effective way to communicate the message that you're trying to get across yeah. to the and potential buyer or vendor, whoever it is. It's not a dialogue because I think at the end of the day, it's more of a language pattern that you're trying to get across that you use 100%. to try and have a level of influence and persuasion, not to be manipulative, but to actually see them that this is the best offer or this is a really good offer that you're, you're, you're yeah. putting forward. And I think that sort of dialogue starts before- Language patterns, mate, come on. Yeah, <laughs> language <laughs> just patterns, yeah. You know, that, that starts before yeah. you get that offer. Totally. So the so way you get to set it up from the beginning, beginning right? Beginning, yeah. Yep. So like for me, it's conversation. Yeah. It's not about- Using a, a massive yeah. dialogue, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So when I list your property, I will tell you what will happen if we get a pre-auction offer. Yeah. I will tell you what will happen if we get an offer on, you know, with a cooling off period. What I, will happen if there's no buyers. If there's no buyers, the, exactly. You know? So I'll have those little conversations with you and set you up so you understand that at no every time- Every possibility and every outcome that could happen. And what the solution is for every outcome. Yeah. Because people just want someone that can find a solution for them. Right? It, it, isn't it funny? Isn't yeah. it funny? You know what? Um, I was listening to, I think about Donald Trump, not that I'm a big Donald Trump advocate, but this is what I listened. He said when he goes out, if, if with his advisors and they go, this is what's going to happen. When he was a property developer, they go, this is the best thing that's going to happen. He said, I want to know every worst possible scenario that can happen yeah. with this project. And then I want a solution for every of those yeah. maybe problems that could happen. Yeah. So what he was, he was actually prepared every time that if worst case scenario happened, he actually knew that the solution was already there yeah. Yeah. and not thinking about, oh my God, crisis moment, we've got no buyers on this yeah. property, what am I going to do? This auction is going to be a failure, my vendors are going to hate me, yeah. my buyers aren't going to find, what am I going to find buyers, etc. right? Correct. So super, super important. Yeah, I think- So good point, good point. Just setting that up with them. From the beginning. And it's also setting up the buyers where, again, if they come to auction and they're the only person, it's about having them to understand well, what's going to be like what they're gonna have to do to buy it. Yeah. And if they say, I think I don't really care, I don't wanna buy it, well then mm. they're probably not that interested. Yeah, yeah. And then if they wanna play the game, well they're probably gonna have competition afterwards, and then they're gonna have to play the game with someone else. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so you just gotta, and tell them that. Yeah. And just be honest with them and talk their language, because that's what people want. They don't want you to use big words. Right. They don't want you to try and be fancy. They just, just, just want- Just be on their level. Yeah, and they just want someone that's gonna tell you- As it like, is. Yeah, and yeah. I always say, how would I feel? Yeah. You know? And you know what, people are smart enough today, Nick, to see through all that. Right. 
you know. Happy data. I'm looking for my phone. You get on happy data, it tells you everything. You exactly, know. So, exactly. Yeah. All right, just while we wrap this up now yeah. for today, just want to ask you this. Just quickly, in say 60 seconds, mm -hmm. what would your buyer management plan look like? How many times do you ring them a week? Do you have a hot buyer list that you work off? Yeah. Um, do, do you take a video of a certain property when you're a property and you send that to your hot buyers? Just yeah. give me a quick sort of overview of what your, your buyer management looks like look, at, really, at, in your business. Hot buyers are in my phone. Yep. Uh, How many do you have at the moment, uh, currently? Look, I'd say I'd probably have about at least 20 in there. Yeah, ca are I'm, they categorized in any different level, buyer, seller, and buyer? Or, uh, not or, really. Or, or, no, all, I, in one, all in one Hot in one buyers list. are hot buyers. Like, understand. I don't, I don't want to differentiate yeah. from them. You don't um, label I, them. No, Beautiful. I, I split my days up. Yep. So there's days that I'll work on potential listings and potential yep. vendors that are coming in, and there's days that I'll just work on my buyers. Okay. Because, what days are they? For you uh, normally, look, generally. I just split it up. So Monday's more buyer day. Yep. And because obviously feedback, open homes, contract holders. Yep. Um, Tuesdays are vendor days. Yep. You know, then just I just split them up like that because then Thursdays I do open homes. homes. So it's buyer day again, yep. and then Friday it's just talking to everybody making sure they're ready, like, you know. For auction, auction invite them to open, open homes, homes, new yeah, opens, yeah. etc. So I just split it up like that, it's just easy for me to manage it. Yep. Um, I don't take videos and send them to, to buyers. Yep. I think once I get the photography done, yep. I, I just give it to all my hot buyers, because then I feel bad, like, I, I give it to everybody. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, just yeah. be fair. Yep. Because then if someone gets in and they're a hot buyer, and they're, yep. like, I want them to feel as privileged as the next of person. Course, of course. So I want everyone to be on the same beautiful playing field, you know. Yep. But, more or less, I, I just talk to them as much as I can. Yeah. Like, you know, and I even help them with other agents' listings. Awesome. You know? Awesome. Yeah. Hey, Nico, thanks for dropping by, brother. <laughs> You're a good. champion. So one of the things you want to take away here is we're heading into spring. There's going to be buyers everywhere. You need to have a buyer management plan. Don't get complacent, right? Yeah, Don't sit on your laurels and think that buyers are going to be turning up to open homes today and they're all going to be like turning up to auctions. You need to have a plan and you need to understand how can you build rapport build trust with those buyers so they can actually feel comfortable with you yeah. and in the process and the way you get the more feeling them comfortable is educate them well i think you educate your vendor i don't know why we're not educating buyers, buyers. and that's what you're doing yeah thanks for dropping in thanks buddy talk to you later Take care. <laughs>